Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Kevin, and today I'm coming back to you with a second edition of Crosshairs On, this time featuring Warrior House Poe, one of my house units, a warrior order of the Capellan Confederation. Uh, Poe Ding was sort of the center, the, the whole idea behind this unit, and he was a figure uh, really an NPC that creeped up in one of our internal RPG sessions where we were doing a campaign. I was GMing and I created this character to sort of be this arch villain for them to go against. And he really turned out being sort of this morally gray character that was rebelling against the Capellans. And the party could choose to sort of ally with him or work for the Capellans and take this rebel out. Um, and he just became this, you know, mythical figure that would creep up and do sessions from time to time and, and sort of harass or do some sneaky stuff with the party. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I decided on the tabletop, why not build a unit around this guy? And, and a warrior order seemed like the natural fit. And I sort of tweaked his backstory a bit to make him less of a rebel against the Capellans and more sort of someone working within the system, uh, sort of with his own schemes at play, but ultimately um, a figure who would be a Capellan to the core, uh, but still have some good qualities and traits that made him likable and not sort of the typical crazy uh, fanatic of House Liao. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I'm going to be coming at you with more of these uh, featuring some of the other guys' house units, but while we're in quarantine, uh, Aaron's been doing Battleytics and I'm just kind of plugging away with my own house units. Why not? Um, hope you enjoy. Stay tuned. In the year 3031, on the Chinese New Year, Romano Liao made the edict that she was inducting a new warrior order, House Po, to commence a great restoration of the Confederation, to help lift her nation from the disasters of the Fourth Succession War, and oust the newest invaders, those of the Andurian Canopus Alliance. This edict had come as a surprise to even the Grand Master of the Warrior Orders, and it was with great reluctance that he would accept oversight for a dubious new house. Although House Poe was well established on their homeworld of Harlock V as early as the 3020s, they were little more than a novelty to the regional duchy, and relatively unknown to the greater commonality or state. House Poe would have to prove itself to gain the respect of their esteemed peers, yet in the near future they would be given that opportunity. Descriptions of House Poe have ranged between a paramilitary unit, a monastic commune, and or a cult of personality. Their ways were shaped by the living conditions on their homeworld of Harlock and the core principles of its founder, Poe Ding. While members simply refer to themselves as the House, they are officially recorded as Warrior House Poe and sometimes referred to as House Poe Ding simply due to their enigmatic master. Po Ding built this warrior order gradually through the early 31st century after earning the title of Refractor, a position of especially high honor on Harlock. He would use this position to handpick from local militia regiments and begin forming an elite unit under his personal command. The new unit's ethos was solidifying around a collection of philosophical teachings that Poe had lectured and wrote on, seemingly the right words at the right time. It was clear he had hit a nerve with the locals of Harlock, and enlistments began increasing with his newfound popularity. The most skilled and adherent to his codes were promoted to Poe's elite order of infantry, and even fewer allowed in his inner circle of prestigious mech warriors. It is suspected between 3029 and 3030, Poe's order had gained enough notoriety to circulate among the intelligence briefings within the Maskerovka and Capellan Strategios, and soon the Chancellorship herself. Romano Liao, acting as Chancellor Regent by this time, had been known to adore her nation's ascetic warrior cultures, and so it was with no surprise that she took great interest in these reports. However, she had surprised her advisors when she declared an impromptu visit to Harlock in March of 3030. 
Romano was said to meet with Poe directly over the course of several days, touring the house compound, observing training, and having private conversations with Poe in his gardens. Her intelligence attaché had reported that Romano left Harlock in a rare good spirit, but what she had discussed with Poe was privy to none. However, a comment was made to one of her senior colonels that had been noted during the trip home. Having said, while they lacked the mechs and armor to effectively hold this garrison, his vigor and discipline proves each of their warriors are worth ten of my cavalry reserves. An aide overhearing this exchange had said the colonel had turned as red as a cherry, taking shame from her admonishment of the reserves. However, the compelling rumor was to the nature of the chancellor's gaff, saying his when referring to the unit's vigor and discipline. Upon returning to Cyan, Romano noted that Harlock was a good candidate for establishing a training facility in the coming years. In lieu of solid plans, it is known that she had begun to earmark several new mechs and stockpiles of arms to Harlock under tight communications in the coming months. This was presumably a gift for Poe, as for the remainder of 3030, the house had a notable increase in its material firepower to bolster its fanatical adherence. The house had often been sighted by local observers, patrolling and drilling in heavier hardware and in more numerous formation. During November of 3030, while the Confederation was embroiled in the shock of the Enduring invasion, Poe Ding was summoned to court in Siam. Prior to Poe's arrival, it was reported that an argument had flared up between Romano and her lover, Tsen Shang, in which he was ordered to part Siam on state business. Scandal or no, the nature of Poe's visit was most likely such that Romano could inform him of her future plans, avoiding the risk of leaks through the normal channels. Romano was known to be pleased with regular reports coming in about House Poe's progress, and it's putting her gifts to good use. The Confederation was once again under attack, and by now a threat of the Endurian Canopus Alliance, so Romano was clearly desperate to safeguard her precarious hold on power. Poe was always a man of quiet and determined focus, but he seemed more resolute than ever following this meeting with the Chancellor. When he arrived back in Harlock on December, the house had begun immediate escalation in drills and preparation. One could only assume by this point that they were gearing for a fight. Then came the Lunar New Year in February 3031, and the Chancellor made her official edict to raise House Poe from a mere planetary militia. There was much rejoicing from the Harlock locals, but Poe's warriors appeared subdued among the clamor. Perhaps it was the even keel of their ideology, but it was as likely their awareness that many would not be seeing home again. Nonetheless, the house had their path set, and all the regiment became singular in purpose. The regiment held the ready in 3031 for an attack that had never come to Harlock. After reinforcements by Sung's cuirasses, the Chancellor made preparations for the house to mobilize closer to the front and meet the enemy. In May of 3032, the House was ordered to link up with the notorious Big Mac, McCarran's armored cavalry, in a massive counter-assault to take back control of the beleaguered planet Beetlejuice. Both the Andurians and the Confederation had been escalating their reinforcements, and transmissions while the House was en route had reported that the Perfectorate Guard Regiment had been beaten down to a few remnants of its 1st Battalion. As such, Romano ordered the House's primary objective to recover this lost battalion and send them home to be relieved of duty. She had made it clear that they would not be allowed a heroic last stand in the name of the Confederation. When the House arrived in system, the Big Mac had immediately begun their orbital descent, following their orders to wait for the House's arrival, but giving little consideration towards mutual cooperation going forward. Nonetheless, the house made a landfall a few days later, near a last known location of the Guard Battalion. They were able to rendezvous with the Guard just as task forces from the 4th Defenders of Endurian had cornered them in. Before the Guard knew they had house reinforcements inbound, they initiated a suicidal thrust into the enclosing formations. House Poe was able to sweep in from behind the Endurians, surprising both sides just as the fighting was getting thick. Although they saved their allies from complete destruction, the Guard earned a degree of respect for their bravery against impossible odds. Rather than disbanding the tattered unit dishonorably, as Romano Liao had ordered, Poe chose to absorb them as his own auxiliary company. 
Poe was pragmatic enough to know he needed the additional experience, and their boldness would prove useful to support his warriors. After allowing the guards a rest, the warriors carried on to join the Big Mac's primary assault and helped turn the tide on Beetlejuice, giving the Confederation a pivotal victory in this war. The absorbed Perfectorate Guard would continue to serve under Warrior House Poe during and after the remaining conflict, and would prove worthy to become the foundation for a planned third company. Romano Liao would later scold Poe for his defiance on her orders, but did not ultimately pursue a disciplinary action due to the publicized success. Instead, Romano would begin to distance her personal relationship with Poe, and she vowed publicly to never restore the old perfector at guard. This narrow escape from her wrath had seemingly been a turning point for Poe's reputation among the other house orders. Ion Rush, the Grand Master of the orders, later confided in Poe that he had proved himself more than a mere puppet, and he wished that together they could secure a brighter future for the Confederation. House Poe would remain on Beetlejuice between 3032 and 3033 to assist Houses Kamada and Hiritsu in garrison duty, forming closer bonds with their fellow orders. No counterattacks would come to Beetlejuice in the subsequent years, and by 3034, things looked to be a turning point in favor of the Confederation's resistance, so House Poe had been allowed to return to Harlock and continue its rebuilding. By 3036, House Poe had both battalions at two-thirds strength, with the remaining companies well underway, so they had again been ordered to mobilize on routine, taking part in a variety of small-scale tactical operations between this time and the present. They would face off against both the Free Worlds League and the Federated Sons in a variety of raids and skirmishes to support the regular army and test their mettle. However, the aim was clearly to keep their ranks active and ever trained for the next conflict and not to put them at serious risk. The Confederation would have no shortage of perennial rivals in the coming years, and so the nation's few elite would see no rest or rust, while House Liao schemed its rise from the ashes. A major component of the House's philosophy revolves around establishing an inner peace in understanding oneself as a peace in the universal pattern. Control and power are fleeting, waxing and waning, and one must embrace the trials of a cruel and cyclical universe. The key to mankind's longevity is through those few who would keep the balance between nature and technology, as well as the person and society. These themes are better understood when looking at the harsh and violent lifestyle demanded of Harlock's citizens. The planet is home to an unusually large population of deadly predators, and outside the protected urban centers, death and maiming of settlers is quite common. In particular, House Poe's monastery is located in subtropical highlands among a vast jungle of gnarled woods, called the Mirewood and it is famously home to an arachnid species called the dire spider. Their adults grow to roughly the size of a Terran pony, and the historical settlers of Harlock, which included the ancestors of Housting, have long recorded stories of their ability to stalk, ambush, and haunt those that would dare trespass in their woods. This violent ecosystem plays an important role in the attitudes of its citizens, and the training of House Poe initiates, one particular ceremony required prior to the graduation for young hopefuls includes a rite of passage through the Mirewood, a multi-day journey where one must evade the commonly sighted spiders in addition to surviving its other natural hardships. Killing the creature is forbidden due to their sacred status, yet they are known to be poor climbers. Survival advises to make quick use of the vast intertwined canopy that dominates the forest, but the spider is fast and intelligent and several promising students are still lost each year. In an oddly similar fashion, the tactics of House Poe make an overwhelming use of deception and ambush. Their tricks mimic many of those learned through the revered dire spider, as well as other tenacious predators that roam on Harlock. They are experts at feigns, misdirection, and luring opponents into false confidence. 
the mech battalion often employs planned retreats or baiting actions to mislead opponents into well-laid traps, while the infantry battalion specializes in tactics of sabotage and infiltration. House Poe is planned for one battle mech battalion and one infantry battalion, much like its fellow orders. From the mech battalion, 1st Gian Company is the original mixed weight company from Harlock, balanced for tactical flexibility and special operations. The 3rd Shield Company is largely composed of the former Perfectorate Guard that were absorbed on Beetlejuice and is structured as a heavy assault unit. From the Infantry Battalion, 1st Fist Company are a standard infantry unit, a carryover from the House Ding Militia, but with specialized background in sabotage, anti-mech, and anti-tank weaponry. The 2nd Arrow Infantry Company are a jump infantry company designed for infiltration into entrenched infantry positions. The 2nd Mech and 3rd Infantry Companies are still recruiting and training on Harlock, and their intended design or composition are not yet known to the outside. The insignia of House Poe is a symbol of balance and symmetry, showing a tree of their native Meyerwood, illustrated with its root structure, and upon a background of yin and yang of their Taoist philosophical elements. The colors of House Poe are a deep forest green with beige highlights, traditionally to reflect the dichotomy between their native forest sanctuary and the more common arid badlands of Harlock. Ho Ding is the enigmatic refractor of Harlock and Xiao Chung of House Po, a title translating as Lord Colonel, known to many as simply Master Po. His emergence onto the public stage came with his first publication, The People's Principles, and it provided the popularity for his elevation as refractor, a local noble chosen to represent the citizens and notably its militia. Prior to that, little has been recorded on Poe's noble origins or upbringing, as the Ding family was very guarded. However, it is known that he is the sole heir to the Ding family lands, yet much of the ruling capacity or management of his fiefdom has been delegated to advisors and local village elders with an unusual level of trust and freedom. His breakout publication, The People's Principles, rose in popularity due to the overall messages it conveyed that a growing human desire for personal gain over that of the common people and the state had been the driver for their national downfall, that many citizens had lost a principle of balance in their lives. Following the ravages of the Fourth Succession War, much of Capellan society had been going through a period of introspection, and his themes clearly resonated with the contemporary Capellan society. With his popularity, promotion, and the interest in his radical unit, he became the subject of curiosity for local tourists, academics, and officials. The Maskirovka intelligence apparatus had certainly been aware of Poe by this time, but it had been noted in various briefings that while Poe's unit may be unusual, their beliefs held no overtly rebellious stances or ideas. Poe and his initiates still held a core belief to advance the future of the Confederation under a celestial wisdom, the Chancellorship. As such, the House was allowed to flourish and continue their work under close observation. Poe continues to write on philosophy and teach, but many of his works have been specifically published for his adherents and held internal to the Order's membership. It is rare to find excerpts of his latest work off-planet. When not participating in operations as a field commander, he is endlessly tending to court on Cyan, aiding in recruitment efforts, or participating in the ritual with his warriors. An interesting aspect of Poe's rise from obscurity was his ability to form a personal relationship to the royal family. Poe's familiar attitude with Romano Liao is often rumored about, but only in the most private settings. 
it is known that being caught slighting her greatness would be met with the most severe of punishments. When visiting Cyan, Poe often has the opportunity to meet privately with Romano. Poe would even be able to spend time with Romano's youngest firstborn, Sun Tzu, and would entertain him occasionally with board games and lessons of his own. Sun Tzu was estranged from his alleged father, Sen Shang, and sometimes had spoken of Poe as the nearest thing to a father figure or child hero he had. This had provided additional fuel to an unsaid rumor around Sun Tzu's true paternal blood. However, as of 3039, Romano has increasingly distanced herself from Poe, evident from recent occasions where his access was denied to the royal palace. She has also spoken on several occasions recently in a not-so-subtle fashion, declaring Sen Shang as her official consort and father to both her children, a move suspected to distance herself from any continued speculation. There it is. Poe Ding, meet the world. I hope you guys enjoyed the content as much as I did putting it together as always. The tale always sorts of grows in the telling. Um, let us know in the comments what you think about this series, what other units you might want to see up next. I'm sure Aaron's Atrium Knights are on deck, if not soon, um, but any other units could go. Um, let us know what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And just to let you guys know, we are coming out of quarantine soon with some bat reps and some new content. Always exciting. Stay tuned for more. Stay safe out there, folks.